Here is a job I'm going to do for a client um, on his bite plate to r repair it. He has a tooth gouge here. It's not severe, but it's enough that it's annoying him when he plays it. Um, and it's, uh, He doesn't take a lot of mouthpiece in, and uh, this tooth is kind of rubbing on, on the metal here. So I'm going to fill it in with a material I discovered a few years ago. Um, DP810. Uh, this is the black. Uh, it comes in a quasi clear also. Uh, some years the black wasn't made, but they're making it again. It's an acrylic uh, two part um, that need to be mixed. Um, in fact, I'm going to uh, use one that I already have open. I'm going to try to. It's near the end of its life. Uh, these these are made to go in at some type of a glue gun that has a mixer on the end of it, but I made my own dual plunger out of a pair of dowels and a little piece of scrap wood, a couple of uh, drywall screws up the middle. So um, you just have to measure and, and make something that you think will work for you. Um, this is the smallest quantity this stuff comes in. It's available on the web. I'm going to see if I can clear out the end. You get some dried up stuff here because this is an old cartridge. I've been using this for a couple, you know, one will last you several years even if you're doing a lot of them. Okay. So hopefully that'll get us on dislodged a little. Um, if that doesn't come out, I'll use the other cartridge. The other thing I do sometimes, not always, is mask off the plating around the, uh, the bite plate. Helps you make a, a neater job. If you've got something that's in bare brass that you're gonna be plating after this, it doesn't, you don't need to do this to protect it, but at least that much I need. I don't need to do up here. Um, the other thing I do for prepping is I, you know, lightly etch the area, you know, put some scratches in it. This is a pin vise with a uh, needle spring in it. I don't know if this is important or not, but I do it. Keeps helps to uh, it might help to adhere. I have a little piece of uh, clear plastic here. It's a backing I pulled off of my uh, so, uh, adhesive back uh, sandpaper. Okay, now it's the time for the push. This stuff has a very short working time, so. Black is a little stuck. I'm getting it clear out. Ah, oh, there we go. So I'm going to pour out more than I need. It's kind of a mess, isn't it? Okay, I'm getting a good stream now. Okay. Then I have a glue stick here, disposable. Get these at craft stores. So you just mix it up. Now uh, this doesn't, even though it's two part, it's not like epoxy. It kind of mixes up in kind of almost a jello-y kind of consistency. There might be some bubbles in there. you got to worry about that a little bit. So, push it to the edge. Now comes the time. Pour some of this on. You have to overfill this one because it, it dries kind of funny. It's like uh, moi uh, it dries in a couple layers. There's a soft layer on the top, and then the hard acrylic is actually underneath it. It's like a, a film. Um, so, okay, that looks like I have that overfilled. I'll just work that in there a little bit. Make sure it's, it's, it's wetting all over the area. Then, you work quickly, don't mess with it. I tap it a while because sometimes bubbles will rise, rise to the top. The other thing is it, it allows surface tension to smooth it out a little bit. So you get a little even coating. I don't see any bubbles popping in this one. When, when you're doing an entire, you can use this material for an entire bite plate replacement. Then for that, I mask the sides and the back. 
and now you have to really worry about bubbles. You may even have to uh, pour it twice. Um, they say you can warm the material and that'll let the bubbles rise, but then it'll make it thinner too. And uh, so I haven't really tried that. But sometimes after this sets and you start filing and sanding, uh, little bubbles that you can't see are inside and they'll open up. And then that may necessitate you to go in for a second round and fill them in. So at this point, I leave this like this uh, overnight. Um, and you can sometimes accelerate it by letting it set for a few hours and then put it under the light of a lamp as a heater on it. Uh, but you got to watch out if you're uh, using this to uh, repair a hard rubber mouthpiece, you'd probably be okay, but it could warp it a little. I did it once with a plastic mouthpiece and it started melting the tip. So uh, proceed with caution on that. So tomorrow uh, we'll come back after this is set and uh, I'll show you the final shaping and what it looks like. Okay, it's the next morning. This is what the material looks like after it's dried overnight. Um, if you give it enough time, it gets uh, that uh, gooey layer on the top kind of evaporates. Um, and right now this is... We can, do, we can file this directly. If there's still a, kind of a, a moist film on there, you can rub it off with a... Uh, a rag. So it's from here on it's um, hand finishing. Sometimes I use a um, rotary tool on it but uh, if you didn't overfill it too much um, you can just get by with hand filing and shaping which I'm going to start now. Because this material is a little still a little soft on the top it tends to clog the file so that's one of the few times I use a card file here to try to keep the file clean a little Some people like to work with their uh, mouthpieces in a vise. I tend to like to hold it all in my hand. There's advantages and disadvantages to each method. You see I still have the electrical tape on there. I'm eventually going to have to get that, pull that off or we'll have kind of a lip. This is a nice, a nice pouring so far. Don't see too many uh, bubbles opening up. Just some real tiny ones. They make it, <laughs> they make it bigger, or they may go away. Okay, this is getting real close for roughing it out. Switch to a finer file. Okay, it's starting to look pretty flush. I'm going to switch to sandpapers now. Um, I'm going to start out with a 220. I keep a, a pile of these pre cut ready to go. You've got to be careful not to scratch the gold plating. I'm keeping my thumb kind of here as a, as a guide. I'm trying to. You usually have to pick a direction, decide if you want to go sideways or up and down. 
For a bite plate that goes all the way across, sideways is good. If I'm repairing a hard rubber mouthpiece, I sometimes, you know, stroke stroke up and down the full length this way. Probably a thinner thinner fold might be more advantageous. Yeah. There you go. This is shaped real nice. Now it's a matter of getting the scratches out. So you work your way down in sandpapers. Um, I keep a, like I said, I keep a supply here. This might be a little too wide. Where's my scissors? Okay, that's three. Let's work on down to four. Got two of them. Okay, my final grit that I'll use is a 600. Then I go to steel wool. These are some old pieces, but you can get a fresh piece. 4-0. It's really, at this point, it's probably shiny enough and you can stop. But I usually also go to a uh, rubbing compound. Let's pull off this tape. See where we're at on that. We've got a little bit of some. Thin layer of the adhesive there. Let me come off with uh, my polishing compound. That's pretty flush right there. There's hardly an edge. If there is, you can kind of carve a little. There, there's a little just to bevel it. That's better than scratching up all the all the gold plating. So steel wool is usually pretty safe to go over gold plating with and it'll take a little off, but it's mostly cosmetic. Okay. I don't know how well you can see from the video, but the edge of the new material is right here. That's where the low spot went down. Uh, it's all pretty flush. So I use a uh, little rag and some polishing compound. Someone gave me this a while ago, so I'm not even sure where it came from, but it's, it's very similar to automotive body polishing compound. It's a abrasive paste. 
a little more abrasive than you'd want to use to polish the finish of an instrument, unless it was bare brass. As you can see from the color, some material came off. And the last step, use a little bit of polishing. Flitz is a good one. Ween all is, is also good. This is a very mild abrasive. It's good all-purpose metal polisher, but I use it on plastic also. You can go a little further if you've got some smudges from the job. Oops. Just as you're finishing, get a fresh piece of your rag to buff it. Hmm. There you have it. A bite plate repair tooth gouge. A lot less traumatic to the mouthpiece than digging it out and making a full re replacement.